new era of Super Smashing is almost upon us. With even more faces to recognize, it can be daunting to pick the brother that's right for you. As we charge forward to Brawl's release date, let's explore the origins and abilities of the newest combatants to bring their own level of martial arts to the competition. Sure, we've already played as Samus, but never in her Zero Suit. We first witnessed the suit in Metroid Zero Mission for the GBA in 2004. After defeating Mother Brain, Samus removed her power suit just before a pirate ambush forced her to find safety with just an emergency pistol to stun enemies. Zero Suit Samus made another appearance later on in Metroid Prime 2 Echoes for the GameCube and Corruption for the Wii, but that time only in cutscenes. After Samus unleashes her final smash, she loses her power suit allowing you to play as the more agile Zero Suit Samus. In this rare occurrence, her gun paralyzes opponents just like in the GBA game, leaving them open for easy combos. In Brawl, though, the gun doubles as a plasma whip, which can be used for both long-range attacks and lengthy edge grabs. With the new Samus comes two new Metroid-themed stages. Norfair is similar to Melee's Brinstar, in that combatants fight over a pit of rising lava. Only this time, a single capsule will appear to provide cover from the magma. Get there first, and close the hatches. Frigate Orpheon is taken straight out of Metroid Prime, Parasite Queen and all. A siren wanes before the lights go out, and then the stage flips over 180 degrees as you do battle on new terrain. Pikmin and Olimar were introduced in Pikmin for the GameCube in 2001. After crash landing on an unknown planet, Olimar discovered the plant-like Pikmin species and used them to retrieve broken parts of his fallen ship to return home. Olimar sent out orders to the Pikmin such as attacking or building bridges. Three years later, they combined forces again in the sequel, Pikmin 2. Just like in the GameCube versions, Olimar is almost useless without his Pikmin in Brawl, so his standard special move adds up to six Pikmin to his arsenal to carry out attacks. As expected, the color of the Pikmin determines its strengths and weaknesses, and mastering when to use each one is critical. For example, white Pikmin will inflict poison, while purple ones slam into enemies instead of latching onto them like the others. Olimar's special down move will gather any straight Pikmin around, as well as shift new Pikmin to the front of the line to further maximize strategy. When the gang gets the Smash Ball, they take off an Olimar spaceship and come crashing down on any unlucky combatants. Because of its smaller attack range, it's an ideal final smash for four-player battles. In their new stage, Distant Planet, the weed flooring is bouncy. When it rains, the slope on the left becomes treacherous, and when the giant bullboard appears on the right, you can feed him with Olimar's opponents. Ike first appeared in 2005's Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance for the GameCube, and then in 2007's Radiant Dawn for the Wii. Born into his father's mercenary company, he leads multiple armies and fights many battles with the coveted Ragnar Sword, an unbreakable two-handed behemoth that fans say bests Link's Master Sword. Looking and playing a lot like Marth and Roy, Ike's down special counters incoming attacks, and his standard special can be charged up to unleash a sweeping strike. With Ike's ether maneuver, he throws his sword up in the air, leaps high to catch it, and comes barreling down on anyone below. Although he can take damage during this attack, he's immovable when the sword is out of his hand. After getting the Smash Ball, Ike performs a more powerful ether attack, first lifting opponents up in the air, delivering a swift dosage of sword combos, and ultimately letting loose with a final pile drive. Ike's Castle Siege stage finds him at a castle in the midst of a battle. The battle first takes place on top of the castle, but eventually the ground breaks apart, bringing the fight onto the castle grounds. Here you'll find destructible statues holding platforms, but the earth breaks yet again, forcing combatants to finish the battle underground. The third installment of the Mother franchise, known as Earthbound in the US, was released in Japan in 2006. Lucas was the hero of the game, a gentle shy boy who eventually learned paranormal abilities known as Psy and PK, allowing him to heal and attack. He has not appeared in any other game since. Lucas joins another mother character, Ness, in Brawl, and while he does share many of the same moves, his edge-grabbing snake and PK freeze attack make him a much more viable fighter. Replacing Ness's flash, freeze is chargeable and controllable after release. In addition, Ness's PK thunder makes a return, a controllable projectile that doubles as a third jump back onto the stage and a heavy attack. Lucas's final smash has him delivering a decisive Starstorm attack. Meteors come showering down on the stage that are nearly impossible to evade. 
and perhaps the largest stage in Smash Brothers history, Lucas' home court is New Pork City from Mother 3. Like the temple stage from Melee, fighting can take place on top and bottom. Once in a while, the monster known as the Ultimate Chimera will appear, instantly sending fighters flying with a single bite. 